Good evening and welcome ladies and gentlemen. The big story of the day is that Arvind Kejriwal has not got any immediate relief in the Supreme Court of India. Rather this entire matter is going through you know the process. The ED has been given a notice there will be a reply from the other side and now what has happened is effectively the Supreme Court has denied any quick relief for Arvind Kejriwal. I think the matter is unlikely to be resolved soon. The prospect therefore of a longer time in jail for Arvind Kejriwal is a certainty. In my view, Delhi at this stage with Kejriwal in jail and continuing in jail for some time at least needs an interim chief minister. Delhi cannot operate in an arbit way. Delhi cannot have nobody in charge and Delhi cannot be run from Tihar jail. The moral argument of trying to look like a martyr by being a chief minister from jail will not help the people of Delhi but more importantly across the country it will set a terrible precedent. What if the chief ministers of many other states of the country, larger states are all in jail? If Kejriwal does not come out of jail for six months, for example, will the government run like this for the rest of the year as well? Personally, I don't think the centre will disturb the situation or thrust the imposition of President's rule. Therefore, this is rather a question the courts must take up. And since the courts take up so many issues anyway, Suomoto, they should guide the nation on whether running a government from jail is a precedent that we, the people of India, should live with. Debate number one tonight, viewers. Absolutely no relief in liquor gate for Arvind Kejriwal. His judicial custody gets extended. I have Harish Salve joining me on that debate as well. I have a full debate on it. Salve is joining me right on top of the show at 9 p.m. tonight. And as retired judges and lawyers make explosive claims and tell the Chief Justice of India not to come under pressure, What's the real story surrounding the Supreme Court of India? What kind of pressure is being put on the country's highest court? And how is the country's highest court responding to it? Former Solicitor General Ranjit Kumar is joining me on the debate at 9.25. At 10 o'clock tonight, the world on the edge amidst growing concerns over the escalation in the Iran-Israel conflict. That debate is at 10 p.m. tonight, ladies and gentlemen. And Sarabjit's killer is shot down on Pakistani soil. Divine providence, but Pakistan accuses India's intelligence agency of being involved. That's at 10.30 p.m. And here are the headlines. This Monday evening on The Debate Tonight. Three days in the first chapter, the declaration of the work is done. So, the negative assumptions of the G20 government is going to be a good thing. I don't want to give it to any of them. Prime Minister takes on the Western media lobby, says India does not need to be lectured on democracy. Congress को पूछना चाहिए कि तुम्हारी क्या मजबूरी है ये सनातन के खिलाफ इतना जहर उगलने वाले लोगों के साथ तुम क्यों बैठे हो भाई? DMK का तो जन्म शायद इस नफरत में पैदा हुआ हो। Prime Minister Modi's sharp retort to Sanatan Baiters says the DMK was born out of hatred for Sanatan. No relief for Likar Gate accused Arvind Kejriwal and K. Kavita as their judicial custody gets extended till the 23rd of April. We found that this was a very disturbing trend. That you, uh, whenever decision comes against you, you try to pressurize the court so that next decision is in your favor. For the first time ever, judges unite against the lobby, call out attempts to pressurize the judiciary in another letter to the Chief Justice of India. India gets access to Indian crew on board seized Israeli ship in Iran as Jay Shankar dials his Iranian counterpart. 
and Sarabjit's killer shot down on Pakistani soil, but Park accuses India's intelligence agency of being involved in the killing. Ladies and gentlemen, Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal or the Aam Aadmi Party cannot wash away the liquor gate taint against his name anymore. Today, the jailed Delhi Chief Minister suffered back-to-back -back setbacks in two courts. On the one hand, the Delhi Rouse Avenue Court extended his judicial custody till the 23rd of April. And all he got in the end was a later date for the hearing. The Aam Aadmi Party has been alleging political vendetta. But he's got no quick relief from the Supreme Court either which is going through the matter quite procedurally, as it should. Let's debate. Two courts, one man. The focus was back on Delhi excise policy scam kingpin Arvind Kejriwal. It was another round of back-to-back -back setbacks for Arvind Kejriwal in two courts. On one hand, the Rouse Avenue court extended his custody till April 23rd. On the other hand, the Apex court refused an early hearing plea challenging ED's arrest. The Supreme Court gave the Enforcement Directorate time till April 27th to file its response to the ARP leader's petition. Likagate accused Arvind Kejriwal was arrested on March 21st, but his jail stay in Tihar will continue till April 23rd. While the Delhi court extended Kejriwal's judicial custody, Singhvi made some scathing submissions seeking an early hearing in the Supreme Court. During the hearing today, Abhishek Manu Singhvi, appearing for Mr. Kejriwal, told a bench of Justice Sanjeev Khanna and Justice Dipanka Datta he had facts to shock the conscience of the court. He also hit out at selective leaks all over the place to discredit the Chief Minister, an extremely short date to begin hearing the petition. The court, though, refused the plea. Earlier today, Punjab Chief Minister Bhagwant Maan also met Arvind Kejriwal in the Tihar jail. After the meeting, Maan claimed that Kejriwal wasn't given adequate facilities to meet his family members. Despite the Enforcement Directorate's kingpin tag and key conspirator tag on Kejriwal, Maan continues to decry the arrest, calling the Delhi Chief Minister Kattar Imandar. ये जो चीज है ये बहुत ही इनको महंगी पड़ेगी क्योंकि अरविंद केजरीवाल जो कट्टर ईमानदार है जिसने पारदर्शिता की राजनीति शुरू की बीजेपी की राजनीति खत्म की उनको ऐसे ट्रीट ट्रीट किया जा रहा है आम पार्टी जो है एक सोच का नाम है अरविंद केजरीवाल एक व्यक्ति को तो गिरफ्तार कर लोगे सोच को कैसे करोगे आम आदमी पार्टी हैज ऑल्सो अनाउंसड द फेज टू ऑफ जेल का जवाब वोट से अक्रॉस फोर लोकसभा कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंसी ऑफ द नेशनल कैपिटल देखिए लोकसभा चुनाव को लेकर के ऑलरेडी सभी राज्यों में कैंपेन चल रहा है दिल्ली के अंदर भी जेल का जवाब वोट से कैंपेन शुरू हो चुका है आसाम के अंदर भी हमारा कैंपेन चल रहा है कुरुक्षेत्रा के अंदर भी हमारा कैंपेन चल रहा है अभी मान साहब का वहाँ रोड शो हुआ है फॉर नाउ देर इज नो रिलीफ फॉर दिल्लीवाल Well, with me this evening, I have King's Counsel, uh, former Solicitor General, India's topmost jurist, Harish Salve, with me. Uh, Mr. Salve, you must have been watching the situation, you know, as far as the Kejriwal case and Likagate case is concerned. Uh, first, uh, how are you seeing this case? I mean, are you, it's a bit of a setback in the Supreme Court today for Arvind Kejriwal. He's not getting any immediate relief. What are the issues which emerge legally and otherwise? Um, uh, I must start by telling you I have some degree of familiarity with the case. I have appeared for the, uh, I got bail for the uh, officer of Ricardo Bernal who was arrested by the ED. Uh, but let's stay with facts and public record. I'm not surprised as a lawyer that uh, at the outcome of the case because of uh, what is in public domain in the judgment of uh, the Supreme Court in the Sisodia case. So I'm hardly surprised that uh, the court uh, has 
he should notice and will hear the ED. And um, I think it's a good message that nobody is above the law. Uh, a person who skips summons eight times, whoever he may be, uh, has to be viewed dimly, purely as a matter of, um, of, of a judicial approach to grant of bail. Because uh, the basis of our constitution is however high you may be, the law, law is above you. If each of us were to become judges in our own cause and decide whether we will or will not obey a summon or whether we will or will not obey an order of the court, then we are heading to anarchy. So we start from there and uh, it has gone on predictable lines as far as I am concerned. There is no, as far as the court is concerned, you can make whatever political allegations you want to make. But as far as the court is concerned, there is no decision in this entire string of cases which has really taken me by surprise. Uh, Mr. Salve, uh, the argument, first of all, has been made very strongly here that approvers mean nothing. Approvers amount to nothing. Even if the approver is someone you have worked with very closely, who is aware of the complexities of the case, they are saying approvers mean nothing. You can put pressure on anyone and make him or her an approver in the eyes of the law. That's a political argument made. That seems to be about 75% of the argument so far that the ARP is presenting of, uh, in, in Mr. Kejriwal's defense. It is true that... Uh, the court would view the evidence of an approver carefully. But that would firstly be at the stage where he's being made an approver. Secondly, Arunab, unlike uh, cases which are now argued on TV channels and on Twitter, in a court of law, the court would first see on what the approver has said. Let me, I don't know what the approvers have said in this case, but let me give you a, a theoretical example. Suppose the approver said, I met Mr. X at his house on so-and-so date at 9 o'clock, which he earlier denied doing. And now he produces a WhatsApp message in a second phone, which he had not disclosed, which shows that he met the person. Will you discredit that evidence merely because he's an approver? If the approver says, okay, earlier I told you I have no idea. Now I'm telling you, here is a check, here is a bank account, here is a trace of funds which move from account A to account B. You go and see that the funds have indeed moved from account A to account B. You still discredit it just because earlier he had lied and said, I have nothing to do with this. So, you know, these generalizations that don't believe approvers. Yes, why does a person become an approver? Your first attempt is to run from the law. When that doesn't work, you realize the options against you are closed. Nirav Modi's sister has turned approver. Did she turn approver day one? No. Why did she support him in... Uh, in trying to launder his money, she did as a sister. When, when the heat got too much, she said, okay, I turn approve because I don't want to go down for somebody else. So there are reasons and reasons why people turn approvers. And this kind of a broadside saying, just because somebody is an approver and made one statement earlier, now he's making another statement, is something which the court, I'm sure, considered and dealt with. The other argument, Mr. Salve, is that Mr. Mr. Kejriwal says, he is not directly involved in the framing of the policy. The argument being no. made is simply uh, a little bit like saying, no. yes, there was a policy. The policy led to somebody profiting. The state exchequer did not gain much. Private people profited. Yes, somebody made 338 crores. But it means, it doesn't mean that I'm corrupt. Because there's no paper to prove that I was the one who was signing off on the decision. It doesn't matter. If there are any number of people who come later and say, I as chief minister had direct role in it. Because I'm a chief minister without portfolio. I don't sign off on things and hence there is no question of personal culpability. So uh, Arnab, you, uh, there's one thing which I've noticed. I was watching, once I was watching, in fact, your channel. Uh, let's not confuse between two independent offenses. Every time you hear the argument, where is the money trail? There are two independent offenses. One is corruption, the other is money trail. Corruption, prima facie, which the Supreme Court found in Sisodia is, to put it in one sentence, a 70 crore license fee, you charge 70 crore license fee, and you justified increasing the wholesale margin from 5 to 12 percent, saying that they have to pay 70 crore license fee. But in 10 months, those people who paid 70 crore license fee earned 500 crores. 
So they said, prima facie, you acted in a manner which caused a loss to the state and a gain to a private person. That's corruption. Was this policy done? It, it was a far-reaching policy. Was the decision taken without the involvement of the chief minister? Is this for anybody to know? I, I, it's hard to believe, but uh, we don't know what the truth is. So it, the second is, has the money which was taken as a kickback been found? It may never be found. But does it? It may somebody who's being hauled up purely for moving funds around may get off the hook if the money is not found. But somebody who is guilty of corruption, because don't forget, under the Prevention of Corruption Act, it is not necessary to prove somebody received a bribe. It is enough if you show somebody acted in a dishonest manner. In the Sisodia. Sisodia, Chief Minister. All, in all the Sisodia the, case, in the, in the Justice Kanna. In the, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. In if the, you look, in the, if you read in, in that the, carefully, in the Manish Sisodia bail order, where he says there is no trail of money, the so, para seven of the Supreme Court judgment, which denied bail to Sisodia. No, in, in para seven uh, of the Supreme Court judgment denying bail to Sisodia, it says, and I quote: "A conspiracy was entered vis-à-vis -vis the new excise policy to enable supersized profits for wholesale distributors in return for kickbacks." and bribes. Now, the conspiracy part is understood. Kejriwal's point is that the bribe has not got into my bank account. Need not. You be. have no specific evidence to prove that the bribe came to me. Maybe he got nothing. That's the point they're repeating, ad nauseum. So, th that's, the, that's the money laundering part. If he that's has pocketed the money, that becomes laundering money. In fact, he, for him, it would not even be laundering. He'd be the prime recipient of the bribe. So, let me just explain to you and for your viewers, Arunab, let's get this clear. A is a government servant, B is a, B is a businessman, B corrupts A by giving him a hundred thousand rupees or a million rupees or a million dollars. B has taken a, A has taken a bribe from B. That's not money laundering. He has received the bribe. That's his offense. You may be able to show that A has a has done something to benefit B. And the law presumes that if you have acted dishonestly to benefit a private interest, money must have been paid. The reason why the law went beyond physical bribes to acts of dishonesty which benefit private interest is because common course of human conduct, you would do it only for a bribe. The money laundering comes later. So A receives a million dollars from B for doing an illegal act. A then gives it to C and C who has had nothing to do with this corrupt transaction takes A's money and puts it in a property in his own name. C is giddy of laundering because what he's trying to do is he's trying to change the color of that money. So money laundering is different from corruption and corruption with the allegation which lies at the door of Mr. Sisodia. I assume that's the same allegation being taken that the, the chief minister and the deputy chief minister conspired to end, make this policy. If the chief minister says he had no role to play in a policy is of this conspiracy magnitude, a charge? Yeah, is, is, is conspiracy a charge, Mr. Salve, for the ED or for the CBI to look at? Both. In a case such as this, I'm reading. Yes. Let me, let me give both? you uh, where, where it comes from. The allegation is Mr. Chief Minister, Mr. Deputy Chief Minister and one or two ministers conspired with a group of businessmen to come up with a policy very favorably, which will be very favorable to a group of people who will raise monies out of it. That's your allegation of corruption. Who all collaborated in that act, civil servants who were parties to that decision making are all conspirators of the act of corruption. Then comes the laundering. The money is, as the allegation runs, the money was paid by the wholesalers who made the bribe. They paid X, X paid Y, Y paid Z. Somebody had given an advance for some election. That got set off. That's the trail of money. Everybody who has touched that money and allowed it to move becomes guilty of an offense for money laundering. He may have no knowledge of where the money came from, just knowing that it, it has come from some naughty business in Delhi. But he helps in passing the money around. That's money laundering. 
So let's let's keep the two separately. Yes, ED is investigating the money laundering aspect, but that these are not as far as the primary people are concerned. These are not in separate compartments. That's why Supreme Court refused bail bail to Sisodia. So you know the courts seem to be pretty convinced of the evidence that they have. Uh, what do you think of what the High Court said when it said uh, that? There is prima facie, the evidence is incriminating qua the petitioner. See, I I'll tell you, very the serious law point that was under the Code of Criminal the Procedure, then come to the conclusion. Yeah, under our Code of Criminal Procedure, the police cannot grant you pardon. A pardon is granted by executive clemency. Approvership is where the police takes a witness to a magistrate. The police officer steps out. He confesses to the magistrate. He tells the magistrate. The magistrate has to be satisfied, prima facie, that this is a genuine confession. He is being contrite. He is coming out with the truth and taking him rather than prosecuting him, taking him as a witness for the prosecution is, will this going to help prosecuting a larger uh, group. For example, I mean, in theory, if Sisodia turned approver against Kejriwal, maybe the court may not allow it because he will say both of you, public interest demands both of you be prosecuted. But if a smaller fry in, in, in the whole process says, okay, I'll come out to the truth and tell you the truth. The court is the final arbiter of should the person be given pardon, treated as an approval, approver so that he comes on as a witness to prosecute the main people in the conspiracy. Now, these are judicial decisions. These are judicial decisions. These are not taken in the ED head office. ED may agree to treat somebody as an approver, but it is the court who has to approve. That's why I think that some uh, Delhi High Court took uh, some umbrage of the vocabulary used against uh, the approver's statements. But but then, you know, if the court also, if the Supreme Court tomorrow does not deny, does not, uh, does not give bail to Arvind Kejriwal in this case, look at the situation that we have here. Mr. Salve, the court does not give uh, does not give bail to Kejriwal. Suppose the Supreme Court also takes the view that yes, there is a fair amount of evidence and we cannot at this stage disregard the evidence. And if the evidence as the High Court says is incriminating vis-a-vis uh, -vis Arvind Kejriwal, then the Supreme Court is unlikely to take a, take a different view. In that case, what's the lookout? I mean, Delhi is not going to have a chief minister. We're going to run the government from Tihar jail. This is what the people of Delhi are looking at. And what kind of precedent is that setting for the rest of the country? Well, uh, I have only two comments to make, one serious and one humorous. If you remember back in the day, we used to have uh, the Yes Minister and the Yes Prime Minister series, which showed the battle between the civil servants and the politicians. And, and the civil servants, those were British civil servants, always maintained that the government would run much better if the minister stayed at home. So... Will Delhi run without a chief minister? I don't know. I mean, is, is the chief minister superfluous in Delhi? I don't know. Uh, secondly, I have heard this argument that there is no constitutional bar. Well, there is something called the silence of the constitution. Did the constitution makers ever contemplate that a popular leader who is found prima facie guilty of a serious offense would be in they would be denied bail and would yet want to govern the state. I don't think the founding fathers ever thought of this. That's why they didn't provide a detail. Of course, on conviction, you lose your seat. But what should be the position in the interim is a matter of personal conscience and propriety. I think you do throw it back well there. Mr. Salve, you've given some very solid perspective uh, on this case and uh, let's see what happens after the 23rd matter is going procedurally but uh, this gives us some fresh perspective on this harish salve thank you very much as always for throwing light on this with me this evening thank you so much that's harish salve ladies and gentlemen i would consider him the last word he's speaking on issues of constitutionality but also tonight he's spoken on issues of political propriety and morality on the political debate this evening ajay alok versus uh, Anmol Pawar, BJP versus AAP, uh, C. Anmol, uh, there are serious issues involved and uh, you know, uh, obviously even the Supreme Court will look at the evidence that is available, 
and decide how to respond. If the case did not have any merit, then it would not even proceed procedurally right now. Uh, and you just heard Mr. Salve as well. You can hear me, Anmol. So, you know, last time I told you the High Court is pretty much convinced yes, about yes, the I evidence against well. Kejriwal. Time has come for you to take a decision because, because public sympathy is not going to build up if the courts aren't going to support you. And the courts are showing no intention of supporting you yet. Arnab, uh, the fact is that Mr. Kejriwal is not named in the ECIR, which in uh, criminal jurisprudence is FIR. No charge sheet has been filed. Even the trial has not commenced. There's no corroborative evidence. And Mr. Salve forgot to inform the viewers that approvers come into scene when there's dearth of evidence. There are hundreds of judgment of the Honorable Supreme Court. The Honorable Supreme Court, while granting bail to Mr. Sanjay Singh, categorically said that there's no trace of proceeds of money. Not a single penny has been recovered in last two years after more than 500 raids. And the second point, I was hearing him very patiently. And the second point which he... Uh, failed to inform the viewers is that the constitution framers did not even contemplate that there will be a so-called premier agency enforcement directorate which will work at the behest of Bharatiya Janta Party which will work as a frontal organization of the central government and without a shred of evidence put a popular three times sitting chief minister See, all of this is who not working the Delhi model of governance all of this is not God. getting you any sympathy. Even this was not contemplated. No, no, all of this is not going to get you any sympathy. Arnab, the Louder, people please. Of I can't hear with us. See, all of this is not going to get you any sympathy. Ajayalok is on the debate the right now. Of, see, if the, the courts still now, my point us, being, uh, Anmol, they Anmol, can see the Anmol, designs Anmol, 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 the, you have thrown everything at the, at, at the court, every piece of evidence. Why are the courts not moved? Ajay Alok, the fact is, viewers, if there was any observation from the court till now saying that the situation, Kejriwal has been dealt with unfairly, there isn't enough evidence, he should not have been arrested, the arrest was not necessary, or question the timing of the arrest, then the sympathy could have moved your way, but it's going in the opposite direction. Ajay Alok. Not at all, Arnav, not at all. Arnav, the problem here is we used to know that there is a difference between Loud. thief and a politician. But a new chronology has been framed by Mr. Arvind Kejriwal that the politician can be a bigger thief than the normal thief. And it's a shameless blot on a democracy that a chief minister is not resigning even after being in jail for almost a month now. Within six days, it will be a month and he has not resigned. So he has created a new benchmark in Indian democracy. Look, there are four P's in corruption. There are four important P's in corruption which a chief minister can enjoy and easily enjoy. First is power, preference, privilege and payment. And he has enjoyed everything. He had the power. He had the preference whom to give the liquor contract to. He had the privilege of doing that and he had received the payment. The kickbacks are there, the, the evidence are there, everything is being nailed and then also this arm Arajak party shamelessly defends Arvind Kejriwal. And in the process, they have lost the entire credibility of theirs. Of course, they have been losing it for the last two and a half years. Because they are in over of corruption. The new, new ideas of corruption keeps on propping them. And look, this is only one. It's one, this liquor scam is only one of them. Now there's a gel board scam which CBI is already investigating. There is an inferior medicine scam, which is also being investigated. There is a knockery scam, which is also being investigated. Say everything, ye to kuch nahi hai ji. Hame phasaya ja raha hai ji. Hum to aise nahi hai ji. Kattar imandar hai hum ji. Are ji, to wahi ji keta tha. Bilkul hai ji, kattar imandar hai. Kattar desh bakt hai. Aap ki tarah desh bech ni rahe hum. अरे कट्टर बेईमान है आपके ये रहे आपके कट्टर बेईमान है आप लोग कट्टर बेईमान ईमानदारी से आपको दूर दूर तक संबंध नहीं है करोड़ का घोटाला किया ईमानदारी से दूर दूर तक का संबंध नहीं है आप लोग उनकी आंखों में आंखें डाल के पूछो क्यों ने पार्टी में लिया क्यों राज्यसभा में अपनी ही बातें अपनी ही बातें सुन लिया करो 
पैंसठ साल बाद इस देश में एक ऐसा व्यक्ति आया है बोलते थे अपनी बात सुनो मुफ्त शिक्षा शर्म आ जाएगी शीशा देखोगे शीशा टूट जाएगा और वर्ल्ड क्लास एजुकेशन प्रोवाइड की शीशा देखोगे शीशा टूट जाएगा शर्म के बारे सपनों को पूरा किया है अरे वर्ल्ड क्लास एजुकेशन कौन से है विजय नखासी सेज इट इज एसेंशियल फॉर लीडर्स टू एड्रेस सच इशूज ट्रांसपेरेंटली एंड इफेक्टिवली मेंटेन ट्रस्ट एंड इंटेग्रिटी The question is, why was the Supreme Court not listening to you? The Supreme Court was not listening to you. Your lawyer Abhishek Manu Singhvi tried to get a shorter date. He said the same things that you said. The petitioner is not named in the ECIR. There were sixteen statements, ten by Sharath Reddy, six by others. One statement becomes positive. The same arguments. There is nothing new. Why was the Supreme Court not moved yeah. by the arguments that were made by your lawyer Abhishek Manu Singhvi? Why was the Supreme Court not moved? Why did they not give a Because shorter date? Why did they decline Singhvi's argument? Why are you not getting relief from the courts? Arnab, Because uh, they think they have the propriety, have right to propriety that how a, how a faster date cannot be given. Because Secondly, by virtue of CM being a CM, he thinks that he can surpass the law. The and giving court, political statements in the court, notice. not be, the matter is to be heard by 29 no legal personnel, and the enforcement directorate has to file a reply within two weeks. Let him, let him, it 50, was 50, not 50, heard on merits today. It will be heard on 29th of this coming month. And the fact is that same bench so, passed uh, similar observations while granting bail to Mr. Sanjay Singh, but the case when it. Reached the Honorable Supreme Court on 2nd of March 2024. The entire case was demolished by the Honorable Supreme Court. The observations were made that if the Enforcement Directorate fights the case on merits, okay, then the Honorable yes. Supreme Court will be bound to make observations as per the mandate of Section 46 of PMLA Act, stating that even prior to such offence is not being not? made out. Who's not? And they also very categorically so stated so that no proceeds of money has been traced. and not a single penny has been recovered and i think it is for mr alok to answer your lawyer has already your board. lawyer has already said it in mr. the court salve very patiently he arnab arnab mr mr salve just said that whatsoever amount has been reached to whosoever person the ed must investigate and that is a part of money laundering 60 crore rupees has been traced to bharatiya janata party which has been given as bribe by p sharad reddy now why is it that enforcement directorate is not arresting uh, jp nadda ji why double standards if there is a clear so proof where you are if the data is published guns? by the sbi on the directorate why you are jumping guns stick to arvind kejriwal the trace of money has stick been stick to the biggest uh, corrupt arvind kejriwal why is it that it is not arresting the officials of bhartiya janata party the money party. trail has been established why such and standards? your lawyer in the court said there where is the money we have spent it in the goa polls this is the statement made by your lawyer where is the money we have spent it in the goa in the goa, in the goa polls sir and that's why that's why raghav chandra is not coming back kya baat kar rahe ho jara law bites ka pad dekh lo law bites ka jawab denge aap ke wakil ne bola jawab de payenge aap shamta hai aap pe jawab dene ki sawal ki jawab main kya dunga jawab aapko de de ki baat aap maan lijiye unhone kaha hai ke baad bhi agar ek hi paisa kisi ke paas jata hai anmol 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 is waqt to jawab aapko dena hai kyunki main main dekhiye ek minute ek minute anmol anmol ek minute anmol meri baat suniye main agla tweet pad raha hu ek minute anmol okay okay jp nadda शिवा कुमार दत्तू तड़ेपली से एवरीबडी ऑन प्लीज गवर्नमेंट कैन कांट बी रन फ्रॉम जेल द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन डिड नॉट क्रिएट एक्सप्लिसिट प्रोहिबिशन कीपिंग द ड्रकोनियन ब्रिटिश रूल इन माइंड हेंस इट डजेंट मीन ए नॉर्मल सिविक लाइफ जेल रूलिंग कैन बी अलाउड 
customary precedence is to resign customs are part of law absolutely i, I agree with you shiva kumar ji i think the conventions are created by the way the political parties respond in situations such as this and dolly bhatia says never seen such shameless liars of aap def defending the indefensible anmol leave all this aside if the supreme court also says like the high court has said that there are prima facie strong evidence against kejriwal what will you do then i don't think the supreme court is going to view the evidence any differently from the way the high court has looked at it if the supreme court also makes the same observations against arvind kejriwal that there is prima facie evidence that he has been leading a conspiracy what will you do yes kya hoga louder no what what if what if the honorable supreme court says that on our directions a data was published and 60 crore rupees were transferred from the alleged kingpin of the liquor scam p sharad reddy to bhartiya janata party go and book mr jp nadda fir kya hoga fir aap kya kahenge how long will you avoid answering questions how long will you how long uh, let ajay respond to that it's a and how long will the bjp spokesperson will how avoid answering how long can your party stop answering question. questions it's been more than 25 days is jp nadda the mastermind of liquor gate or is arvind kejriwal the mastermind of liquor gate who is the mastermind of liquor gate no 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 who is the mastermind of liquor gate no no jp who is the mastermind of liquor gate is the mastermind of liquor gate jp nadda didn't form the who is the mastermind dalali diya bhartiya janata party ko jawab dena ye jawab de ye aaj desh ko oh now you accept there was a liquor gate earlier you were not expect bhai sab sab ka jawab nahi doge hum puchte rahenge accepting We will yeah, expose each and every spokesperson of BJP. JP Nadda took the policy back. What expose? You are then you why are did JP Nadda take sixty crore bribe? You don't have any shame left. Sat crore rupee ki rishwat kya hui aapne? You don't have any shame left. Jawab nahi hai aapke paas. Koi sharam nahi bachi. Rose expose hote rehte ho. Jawab hai hi nahi aapke paas. Aap de hi nahi paoge jawab. Aare theta rehte ho. Aapki sachai desh ke samne aa chuki. Sir, phone ka koi fayda nahi. Arna, let him speak more and more. Ek kattar imandar, kattar desh bhakt aadmi ko. Aapki jail ki salaam ke saath nahi rakhayengi. How, how cheap they are. They are not political party. They are a corrupt company. They are a group of thugs. They are group of thugs. Anmol, it is not going to work. Anmol, you are constantly giving yourself certificates. It will not work. Anmol, Anmol, you. I will call you back on the day the Supreme Court takes a decision on it. And if the Supreme Court also says that there is prima facie evidence against your leader Arvind Kejriwal, then you have to answer very differently. You cannot then start attacking the Supreme Court order. Also, your options would have run out. I thank you, Anmol and Ajay. Ladies and gentlemen, I am now moving on to a very, very important subject, which is the letter I have in my hand for the first time. A coalition of 21 retired judges from the Supreme Court and High Courts have written this letter to the Chief Justice of India. They have expressed serious concern over the mounting efforts, in their view, by certain factions to undermine the judiciary through orchestrated pressure, misinformation, and public criticism. they allege that the motives behind these actions as being driven by narrow political agendas and personal gains aiming to erode public trust in the judicial system now viewers is there an attempt to undermine the judiciary the supreme court is coming under major controversy repeatedly and there are people who believe that there is a certain lobby of four or five or six lawyers supported by a group of the media who try to target and embarrass the judiciary and though of course the judiciary is never going to admit it it is possible prone at least to being i mean if not influenced it can get affected its judgments may not be affected but the idea is that let's put pressure on the judiciary let's undermine the judiciary let's get articles written uh, let the lobby of the media work against the judiciary and hope that builds considerable pressure on the supreme court judges now what is important about today's letter sohail and kapil are joining me right now what is important about today's letter are the signatories you see this controversy sohail has been brewing for a while is there an attempt at putting pressure on the judiciary but now it's very different it's not just citizens it's not eminent citizens ex bureaucrats or just top jurists former supreme court judges themselves are writing to chandrachur former high court judges and supreme court judges are writing to justice chandrachur saying 
that we, a collective of retired judges from the Supreme Court and High Court, are taking this moment to write to you, drawing upon our years of service and experience within the judiciary to express our shared concern regarding the escalating attempts by certain factions to undermine the judiciary through calculated pressure, misinformation and public disparagement. Suhail, this is happening at a time of elections. And we all know, I mean, let's not try to, you know, beat around the bush. The fact is that there is a pressure being built by certain members of the lobby as critical cases become before the Supreme Court. Whether it's the Kejriwal case, whether it be any other case, whether it's the electoral bonds case, build pressure, build criticism. If the court does not judge your way, say the court is not doing enough, target the Chief Justice. You know, it's, it's happening repeatedly, but now that former judges are writing about it, what's your thought? I think there's... Yeah, I what's your take? <coughs> so, a couple of views here. Number one, the undermining of the judiciary is reprehensible in any democracy, especially when you choose to denigrate them at a moment of your choice. I've often said when the government loses in court, we talk about democracy being back. When the government wins in court, we say, oh, my God, democracy in this country is over because this pillar has also collapsed. Number two, there's a lot of noise Arnab, on social media which denigrates the judiciary which almost seems to be like a herd mentality. It's mob lynching. There's nothing else. It's a lynch mob that has come up and about trying to tell judges that, oh, this is how we think of you. But the third point is even more important. This pressure is not from outside alone, Arnab Goswami. This pressure is from within the bar. This pressure is from a select bunch of lawyers who have no income, no work, except to abuse the judiciary every day. They talk about, they blackmail the judiciary, they denigrate the judiciary, they cast aspersions on its integrity and independence, and they get away because they are members of the bar. And you know that their agendas are clear. Some people were part of one common man's party who are no longer part of that party, constantly abuse it. You have former presidents of bar associations constantly abusing. Is that the government has in many ways allowed this nonsense to happen? And I'll explain to you how. Aam Admi Party or the incarceration of Arvind Kejriwal is a judicial matter. Every time they discuss the matter and it is not in court, they say, oh, it's political vendetta. But for God's sake, the courts have extended his uh, incarceration. The courts have denied him bail. Courts have denied Satyendra Jain bail. The courts have denied Manish Sisodia jail, uh, bail. The same court that threw the electoral bonds out. At that time, the courts were independent. At that time, the courts were full of democracy and de democratic values. But today, they are not. I mean, it's the goose and the gander story. It is tragic that we are allowing this farce to play out. And I'm delighted that the, the, the judges have written. What is sad is that for after a long time, you have an excellent Chief Justice of India in D.Y. Chandrachud. Him to have to suffer and his brother and, you know, sister judges to have to suffer this constant abuse is tragic and uncalled for in every which way. I don't know how this is going to stop. I'm glad you're doing a program or not. Is this because this is not about pressurizing the court. The problem it's also with the media, Chandrachud. So it is, is abusing that anything judicial which is freedom. That's around around lawyers, yeah, around yeah, anything around the Supreme Court, lawyers, judges, the media also tends to sort of avoid it, saying let's not get into this area, we don't want to be seen to be speaking for or against the Supreme Court, but I consider it my responsibility to speak about it because of course pressure is being put and then people like Kapil Madan or others will say, why are you assuming that the courts would come under pressure? I'm not assuming. I am assuming that there are attempts by certain groups to put pressure. I am not assuming that they will come under pressure. I can give umpteen examples of the same. And, uh, you know, we've... Yes, Kapil, you want to come in on it? Can you unmute yourself? Arav, let me just first decode this entire controversy and I will tell your viewers a quick sequence of event. When the electoral bond, uh, bond judgment happened, none other than, you know, Mr. Adi Shargalwala wrote a letter to the president 
seeking that you know this judgment aside knowing fully well that this is not the procedure prescribed under the law not in the constitution on any of the you know law related books but then again he wrote a letter thereafter during the electoral bond uh, hearing subsequently he again mentioned and he was reprimanded by the none other than you know an honorable chief justice of india and also this letter was supported by none other than our honorable prime minister because he himself tweeted so now tell me one thing even a uh, you know anyone anyone looking at the sequence of event would know that this letter is been orchestrated by none other than the incumbent central government because the honorable I prime think you should take that back no I mean if you're reason, trying to say that Harish no Salve and me, Justice uh, Deepak Verma uh, former Supreme Court judge Sohil. Justice Anna, Krishna Murari former Supreme am, Court judge Justice Anna, Dinesh Maheshwari former Anna, Supreme unfair. Court judge Anna, Justice MR Shah Anna, Justice MR Shah is former it's Supreme unfair. Court judge a part of orchestrated attempt I mean I think I think you're running foul of decency man Yes No no you it's unfair of you to I say the former Supreme Court judges are part Anna, of a conspiracy. Anna, I know that. I am no. Uh, you that. are. I am, you know. I am. I am. I am. You know. Decoding <laughs> this entire fallacious. You know. Premise of this debate. And now let me tell my. You know. Second argument. Now I would ask one question. I heard one of the signatory of this letter. You know, Justice retired S N Dhingra, who. You know, very clearly said when the honourable judges made a reference in a Patanjali case that I will rip you apart. Though it was an oral observation, he said that the judges are not acting partial, partially. So you know, and he mentioned that the judges should act impartially. So by this letter, what you are trying to portray, it this letter writing of this letter is itself is an exercise to create this kind of a narrative against you know the judiciary but i must tell you that our judiciary is independent our judiciary no, how is the letter I, is the letter aimed at creating a narrative against the judiciary kind of, i i'm sorry I, I, kapil because you will not end i will come in and i will have to lower your fader kind of for a while the you know the point is and, the and point is one minute uh, uh, kapil 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 you will have to be brief thank you kapil you will have to be brief see listen I think you should support the letter. Anmol should also support the letter. See, Anmol, I'll tell you why. Whatever you case you have, for example, you as an Arvind Kejriwal, the courts are absolutely clear about which way they stand. And eventually, Anmol, can you hear me? I'm saying eventually the courts will go by merit. What anybody says or doesn't say does not matter. Or what is published in a few legal websites does not matter. The judgments of the court have lasting significance. So Anmol, have you read this letter? Yeah, I can't hear you. Can you unmute yourself? I can't hear you at all. I don't think he can hear the fact that he needs to unmute himself. So it's a double whammy. Yeah, yeah I don't think he can hear me. Anmol, have you? Can you hear me, Anmol? I'll try once more, Sohel. Anmol, no, can you hear me? No, you sign language. No, no. I think I think he's not trying to avoid it out there. Point being, I think Sohel, we are. I I think yeah. There's a problem with the connection. You see, language. yours. Uh, this is a very serious matter. No, no. But Sohel, if 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 Supreme Court judges are themselves my, uh, writing, uh, ah, see, if now Supreme you Court it. judges, Sohel, stop it. It's too funny. <laughs> If Supreme Court judges have them themselves started writing to Justice Chandrachur, saying don't come under pressure, obviously all of these former Supreme Court judges, judges of Mumbai High Court, former judges of Delhi High Court, Rajasthan High Court, Jharkhand High Court, Punjab and Haryana High Court, Allahabad High Court, Uttarakhand High Court, Supreme Court of India, all of them are people of tremendous experience. And they are trying to ring fence because they know that, you know, lawyers and jurists and others associated with Ahmadmi party or your supporters will try to put pressure. They are no, trying to ring Kapil, fence the Supreme Court take, under, against that kind of pressure. Anmol. So let's take Kapil Badan's point on board. Let's imagine Anab, whatever I, Kapil has said is true. No, let's get Anmol's response and then hear from you. Anab, the fact, right. Right. Anab, 
based on central government advice. Anab, Let's imagine that is Anab, true. Anab, the fact is that out of 23,790 sitting judges and 50,000 retired judges and out of 20 lakhs advocates, I, have, uh, I just got to know that some 21 judges, uh, honorable see, judges and few advocates have written a letter. But I must say that the Honorable Supreme Court is capable enough to withstand any pressure and any media trial. So I Very think it's right. not a matter of concern. We have full faith in the law pressure. of the land that's and full it, faith in the Honorable so Supreme Court. Well, so that is an admission. So no, no, now, no. You put the pressure the and then you Kapil say the Supreme Madan, Court should be strong Kapil enough Madan's to withstand point, it. So well, last word. No, no. Kapil Madan's point that, oh, the central government has weighed in and all that, to my mind is a bit, whether it's true or not, to my mind it's a bit far-fetched because these are not people who would want a sinecure or want something from the government. I don't think Harish Salve either has the time or the influence over these people to say, okay, all you guys write a letter. Let's imagine if all that had happened. I want to ask two questions. Number one, as the gentleman from Aam Aadmi Party said more courageously than I'd imagined, would you want the judiciary to be undermined in the manner it's being undermined? Do you really fr feel proud to be an advocate in this judicial yeah. system of India where day in and day out people are manipulating the judiciary uh, Kapil, tell me, do you really believe that a very I senior lawyer who I have a lot of respect and time for? Suhail, Suhail are you questioning the wisdom of Honorable Chief him? Justice of India? One minute. Do you think I'm he'll succumb under pressure you. of few advocates? Are, I'm not talking to you. When I when I need your advice, I'll write No, but you. answer I'll my question, na. No, no, I'm speaking to Kapil. Yeah, I'll come to you it. later. I was the one who signaled you to, you to be rattled. Start, so don't stop. Now, let me just tell you one last thing, Kapil. No, but I, uh, you heard what I was, Mr. Kapil Sibyl said. The voice was not clear. Full court. Kapil Sibyl said, this is not going to be remembered as the golden period of the judiciary. That's what Kapil Sibyl said. You know that there have been enough discussions about the Supreme Court, about the Chief Justice, about judges. There have been innuendos in, on social media that, oh, if this bail is before a particular lady judge, that bail will be denied. Do you deny that this is going to dent the judiciary? Simple question. Oh, let me have to close. I have to close. I have to close. I'm totally short of time. I'll come back to that. Uh, no, no. I think I think the letter. I'm going to put it out on uh, republicworld.com. You can take it forward from there. Viewers on the other side, the big story over the weekend has been the Iran versus Israel escalation of conflict. We have voices from the ground. When I'm back.